In my first full-time gig, back in the 80s, in the world of my IT career, my first real job was at EDS, Electronic Data Systems. And there are some very important lessons that I learned and I'd like to share with you about both getting into the field of IT and then once there, excelling in it. And that's what we're gonna cover in this video. And let's rewind back just a little bit before I got that job at EDS. I was in school at Control Data Institute. And in school, the, the course was like a year long. And about eight months in, they came and talked to me and said, hey, uh, Keith, um, we have this company that's looking for technicians and we'd like you to have an interview. And I said, uh, well, I'm not done with my schooling yet. <laughs> I didn't understand at that point that the schooling is a tool. The training is a tool to build skills in preparation to get a job. And then once you get that job, we can continue developing skills. So I was surprised they wanted to talk with me because I wasn't done with my class yet. So I had this really great interview with a woman named Anita Martinez. She was the interviewer and also my soon-to-be manager. And as I was talking with her, I, I was so excited about this potential job. So I was meeting with her and one of the things I asked her um, before I left was, I know you're interviewing several people and if you, when you do hire somebody, what could they do right now? You know, from this moment between now and when they actually get hired, that could help them prepare to be even that much more effective once they start working. And she looked at me and said, well, what do you know about laser printers? And I said, I know nothing about laser printers. HP laser printers were a new thing uh, for the common desktop or the common office space back in the 80s. They're fairly new at that point. So I said, I don't know much about it. She gave me this huge book about the HP laser jet printer. And she said, a person could study this. And so I said, can I borrow it? So I borrowed that and I studied, it was, it was huge. I did not get all the way through it before I came back for another interview. But what I did learn about was fuser rollers and corona wires and the transfer and the electromagnetic, electromagnetic characteristics of the toner and why it sticks and the, how it gets melted on the paper. And when I came back for a follow-up interview, she asked me about the details regarding, did I learn anything from that book? And I told her what I knew I, about the corona wires and the fusers and so forth. And she was impressed that I would take the initiative to go ahead and learn or study that even though I didn't have the job yet. So my first tip is that we want to always be asking ourselves, what can we do on our own power to be of more value? And it's not only going to help our employer or the people we serve. It's also going to help us because as we are improving our skills, we get to own that and get better and better at what we do. So that's step number one. Always look for those things that we can do and not always be told what to do, but look for those things that we can do to improve our skills and provide more value to those people that we serve. Now, the great news is they did offer me a job at Electronic Data Systems. As I recall, it was around 20,000 a year for an entry level technician. And I was so excited. Uh, that was a lot of money. That was great news. So um, I accepted the job. And then a couple days later, I got a call back from someone in human resources who said, yeah, we followed up on a couple of your um, referrals and your past work. And they said they didn't know who you were. And I thought, oh my goodness, what did I do? What have I done for a living? I was, uh, I, I drove a, I worked at a rental yard with backhoes and forklifts and trucks and stuff. And I knew the owner. And I also worked at, at a restaurant or two as a bus boy and waiter <laughs> and a dishwasher at times. And so those are the companies I'd put. And so the second lesson I'd like to share with you is that we always want to make sure we have our data accurate. And I'm not sure how that got mixed up, but what I said was, you know what? There must be some mistake. Let me verify the information and get back to you. And then I called, I called the owner of the rental yard I worked for. I called the previous people I'd worked for as a dishwasher and a waiter and uh, I confirmed their information, got their names and I called back and I spoke to human resources and I said, uh, here's, I, I'm not sure where the wires got crossed, but I just spoke with the owners of this company and this company where I worked from these years to these years. It's all accurate. And if you'd like, here's their, here's their personal numbers. Please feel free to call them again. And they did, fortunately. They called them back. Whatever communication mishap happened before, it was solved. So the second lesson I learned, which was really important, is start with good data. Make sure the information, the contact information is there for those people or resources that we're listing as resources. Also, maybe give them a heads up that you might be getting a call, uh, somebody verifying my background and so forth. And that's really important. And then if something does go wrong, it's important to jump in and follow up in a consistent and accurate and well-documented manner. I often use a spiral notebook and I would recommend I uh, use something similar or digital works too. But if you have a conversation with somebody, 
uh, as far as details and so forth. If you just list everything out, I spoke to this person that date and this person that date, that is gonna come in handy more than once in our lifetimes because sometimes, especially with medical records and insurance billing and other details, there's usually a lot of iterative steps and the person who has the best documentation is most likely to get their point across. So keep good documentation as we go. So I did get that job at EDS, Electronic Data Systems. I loved it. I had a lot of really good practical hands-on experience in working there as an entry-level technician. And the third thing that I learned that I'd like to share with you in this video is that it always pays to be authentic and nice to everyone because you never know uh, the difference that'll make. You could improve somebody else's life just by being kind to them and being authentic. You could also make a connection or a relationship that might help you later. One case is uh, Dave Nelson. Dave Nelson was the network engineer when I was the PC technician. So I was excited about PCs and then this network started to develop. Dave Nelson was the guy, back in those days it was Novell Netware, but uh, Dave Nelson was the guy who was putting the networks together and if you think a computer is cool, <laughs> you should see a whole bunch of computers tied together with coax cable sharing common files off of a file server that's been comp served for eight hours. Um, I, it was just amazing. So I was inspired by him and he showed me some tips. This is how this works and this is how that works. And that led to my interest in networking. So I got some more training and some more hands-on practice. And then that led to eventually getting some CCIEs with Cisco. So CCI is a Cisco Certified Internet Network Expert. I got my route switch CCI in 2001, and I have my security CCI that I got in 2003. And uh, that's just a couple from Cisco, and I have lots of other certifications from other vendors as well. So the key here is be nice to people, be authentic, and follow the golden rule. You know, treat others like you would like to be treated. And even if other people don't treat you that well, they don't treat you as well as you're treating other people, doing more than we're paid for, seeking our own skills and our personal development and being nice, all of that is for our benefit. We win when we do those things and we do those things consistently. So those are a few of the lessons that I learned in both getting the job at Electronic Data Systems and also thriving and growing while I was there. I also have on my list of videos that I want to make is the video about my history from before Cisco Certified Network Associate at the low end all the way through into CCIE times two. So I'll, I'll cover those details and some of those really cool stories and lessons learned in those videos coming up. So meanwhile, I wish you the best of success in your goals moving forward every day, one step at a time, picking yourself up if you fall down and going in the direction of your goals. You, my friend, are absolutely worth it. And I'll see you in the next video.